Hi, I'm Zach. I'm Camille. We work for a secret science group, and we know how to use a time machine in order to travel into the past. It's the 21st century. There are time travelers, you know. Enough of talking. Let's get rolling. Wait, we need to explain our mission. Yes, we are traveling in time to visit different types of humans who once lived and roamed the, into the Earth. They didn't look at all like us. We had the looks, but they're hideous. There were different types of human ancestors, but we'll just visit three types of ancestors along with their own kind in the past. Those are Australopithecus, Homo habilis, and the Homo erectus, along with the modern humans, Homo sapiens sapien. You say the sapien twice. Well, it's time to go. We're late. We'll document our trip. See you later. The Australopithecus afarensis is one of the first ancestors of modern humans that we decide to visit. But they're better known as their genus only, the Australopithecus. They're really ugly. They're ugly fine, but they're our ancestors. They're one of our earliest ancestors, probably the first species that somehow resembled a human. They lived in savanna environments, tropical places with not a lot of trees. They ate meat and some plants. Scientists predict that the Australopithecus species ate hard foods, such as nuts. Don't forget the seeds. They also like eating animal carcasses, or in other words, the meat from the dead animals. The Australopithecus may have looked similar to us in a number of ways, but there are also some changes in the skeleton. Starting with the brains. Their brain were tiny. Uh, the average brain size of an Australopithecus was only 35% of ours. Can you imagine that? Most Australopithecus members were also short compared to the average human. Their height ranged mainly between 1.2 and 1.4 meters. Today, that would be the average height of a second or third grader. Isn't that horrible? They're both ugly and short. Yeah, well, the final main difference is that the Australopithecus males and females were extremely easy to distinguish. Males were way bigger than females. The size difference could even reach up to 50%. Whereas in modern days, human males are only 15% larger than females. Don't forget the fact that their faces stuck out to the front a lot. Right, can't forget that. Seriously, I'd always wonder what it'd be like to meet an Australopithecus. Yep, but they're extinct, obviously. You can't see them around in 2014. We were sent here to examine them. Time to go wash the Australopithecus hominoids in action? Sure. Uh, if they look even uglier than in the pictures we found on the internet. This is Zhao and Camille, over and out. Our second stop is during the time where the Hoba habilis lived. Same environment as the Australopithecus, still savannas. Homo habilis only. Homo erectus didn't evolve yet. The Australopithecus are extinct. I can't help but feel thankful. The Homo habilis don't look too much like humans, huh? Oh no, they are actually the least similar species in the Homo genus compared to with humans. The Homo genus being basically the genus of humans. Homo habilis was one of the first species in the Homo genus, so I guess it's only to be expected. Obviously, considering the fact that they are half the height of an average human and they have a way too long arms compared with modern human, I really wouldn't be surprised. Their face doesn't stick out as much as the Australopithecus. That's an improvement. Also, the brain size is a little bigger. Actually, 30% bigger. It's less than half the size of a modern human's brain. That's more than the Australopithecus. The human species have evolved. Barely. But they are proof of human evolution. The facts that their brains and their faces have changed to align more with modern humans means that their bone structures are changing. As for the proportions, that just proves that there are a few more stages to go before we come to the modern human stage. When, when you put it like that, I guess it makes sense. And I guess that the Homo habilis were a bit smarter than the Australopithecus. I mean, they invented and used stone tools. That's a start, right? Yep. The stone tools were mainly used to cut the meat they collected rather than hunting. They were already expert hunters since the time of the Australopithecus. That's a given. How else would they survive? Speaking of hunting, it's time to watch the Homo habilis hunt and live. Ready, Camille? They're still so ugly, but let's go. Zhao and Camille, out.
only one more destination in the past before we return to the present. Yep, we've gotten plenty of evidence on the Australopithecus. And the Homo habilis. Now we've got to do the Homo erectus species. Okay, let's review. Homo erectus is a species of human in the Homo genus, which is the genus of humans. Compared to the other two species we visited, this is one of the most similar to the modern day humans. It lived for some time along the Homo habilis, although in different parts of the world. The Homo habilis were mainly in Africa, whereas the Homo erectus stayed in Asia. This cancelled out the idea that Homo habilis evolved into Homo erectus, although it could be a group of people instead of the whole species. Which basically means that, they, that we might have to see the Homo habilis people again. Yay! I don't think the Homo erectus and the Homo habilis ever met. Well, the Homo erectus still don't look too much like the humans. One of the most significant ways the Homo erectus is much more similar to the modern humans than the other two human types we visited is the fact that their brain size is, again, bigger. In, the, in other words, they're a little smarter. Yeah, the brain size of the Homo erectus is 74% of a modern human's brain. That's a big leap from barely under half to 74%. Also, the faces don't stick out too much. Actually, they're better looking than the Australopithecus. Their height was similar to ours, but their arms and legs are still quite long. The male-female difference wasn't as obvious. So they evolved, obviously. They also discovered a number of skills that weren't discovered yet. They figured out how to create fire. Yeah, yeah, they did. Pretty cool. They probably didn't cook their food, though. Berries, nuts, even animal meat can be eaten raw. They did develop more sophisticated stone tools, though, expanding on the idea of the Homo habilis. Same type of environment. Savannas. Yeah. Do you realize this is going to be our last trip for some time? We'd better make the most of it. Yes. The Homo erectus won't stick around forever. It's time to go. Imagine next time we document information before exploring it. We'll be in the present. It's been fun. Well, one day we'll do this again for now. Zhao and Camille out. And we're back in the present, 2014. Curry, we didn't get killed by different human ancestors. I didn't die from being in the present of the ugliness. That was fun. Can't wait to do that again. Well, we're not done. We still have to do a report on modern humans, or Homo sapiens sapiens. OK, Homo sapiens sapiens are, well, modern human beings. The humans of present, the only species in the Homo genus that hasn't died out. Not quite. Um, come again? Homo sapiens sapiens is not a species. It's a subspecies. And what's the difference? There's another type of Homo sapiens. It's called Homo sapiens adultu. But we're not that. No. But they're still Homo sapiens. So they mainly have the same details. Mostly, but on to describing humans. Well, we, modern humans, have a much lighter frame than their ancestors. In other words, we don't look half gorilla. Not the way I put it, but I guess so. Our teeth are smaller, our foreheads slant vertically. Our brains are much larger than the Australopithecus, Homo habilis, and Homo erectus. We have more brain capacity. We've come a long way concerning intelligence. Just look at the technology these days. MacBooks and iPads and smart boards. And time travel. Yep, time travel. We won't be doing that again for some time. But this was a great experience. Right. I will look forward to the day where, where we get to do it again, to continue the study of humans. Until then, it's time to study. This is Zown Camille, over and out.